Welcome to Jags Drive Time with Ashlyn Sullivan, John Osher, and Brian Sexton. Jags Drive Time starts right now. Yes, sir, Steve. Let's go. Let's go, Trav. Get it, brother. Third down and 10. Lawrence with time. All kinds of time. Great protection. Turns and slings the ball. And he's got Marvin Jones. Who makes a dramatic catch? Let's go. Let's go. Yes, sir, Ma. There we go. Come on, let's go, bro. Let's go. Wide receiver Colin Johnson mic'd up in the Jaguars' first preseason game. You can check out all the mic'd up features on Jaguars.com. Doing good work weekly. Max it's Hoffman. Excellent. It is. Yeah. Good stuff. stuff. Welcome in Jaguars Drive Time on a Thursday morning. We're starting to get into this regular season schedule, getting used to it. I think we're on Wednesday next week, we right? We are. So we're Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Write it down. Be on time. I'll be here. 10 a.m. But you like it or not? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Brian, before we start, before we start big things, yeah. I know you wanted to say a little say something. about John Pease, mm -hmm. uh, who was a longtime defensive court coach here, defensive coach with the Saints. Um, he was the defensive coordinator in 2002, which was Tom's last season. Hey, look, you know, and, and John and I have done this a long time. You go through this league, you make friends, and then friends leave and they go other places. And sometimes you can't appreciate them until they're gone. And, I, and, and John's been gone from here since 2002, so almost 20 years. He lived in Jacksonville Beach for a long time. Used to see him. He'd come down to games uh, when he wasn't, you know, intermittently coaching in different places. Um, but he was always energy in the room. He was always that guy who wanted to know how you were doing, and he cared about the big picture. What are fans saying? What you know? What's going on in the community? I heard something about what happened, you know, at this school or that football game on Friday night. He cared, uh, and I, we're all richer having people like that in our lives. So uh, many condolences to the Peace family because John Peace uh, not only was a terrific football player, at one point the, the field at the University of Cincinnati was named in his honor. Um, but he coached with the Dome Patrol, John, mm -hmm. uh, back in the Saints days. Was a really tremendous coach and tremendous person. And um, sorry to see him leave. Yeah, he, uh, in the early days of the Jags, uh, there was something about the 95 to 99 team. Obviously, they're special on the field. But I think it was also special for people because there was the interest was so intense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was working for the newspaper at the time, and you did stories on everybody because everybody wanted to know everything about the JAG. And so you got to know those guys. We were in Stevens Point with them. But the thing I remember about John is he would uh, rollerblade around the stadium as yes. his workout. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah. it was – it was impressive because he could rollerblade. Yes. And I Schlin once rollerbladed and I uh, is that the past tense rollerblade rollerbladed <laughs> and was so. was proud to have been able to make it from my garage the 5 feet over to my pickup truck before falling. So that was about the extent of my rollerblading. Oh. But John could do it and uh kidding aside he was a guy who uh a little offbeat. Without he a doubt. didn't really walk the same walk as a lot of NFL coaches. Right. Meaning, uh, you know, he was just sort of his own guy. Mm -hmm. And I liked that about him. And he was uh, one of the people that made that time so special. We've lost a couple coaches from that staff. Mike Mazur, the offensive line coach. Pete Carmichael, Carmichael the wide yeah. receivers coach. John Peace now. And that just tells you how long the Jaguars have been going at this thing. But John Peace was one of those guys who was not scared of Tom Coughlin. No, he just no. shrug it off. He was not scared of him. So it was fun to watch. And, and uh, when I saw that last night, it just kind of took me back. And I'm sure some of our viewers will remember John Peace. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the good guys, and, and th those assistant coaches, sometimes their name, they're not famous. Right. The people that get forgotten, I didn't want him to be forgotten in Jaguars history. Well, very nice message, both of you. Thoughts and prayers to his family as we get into big things. And big thing one is next. New Orleans Saints preseason game is next, Monday night on the road. Is there such a thing as a – bounce back preseason game because this really does feel like that I don't know if that exists but if it ever did it's for the Jaguars they want to bounce back the second preseason game and they want to see more from their offense which leads us to big thing too which is now in this moment head coach Urban Meyer wants more from his team specifically the offense and what they show so much I hear you know, we can't show this can't show this can't show this can't show this I don't want to get into it, but I, I want to go some tempo, and I'm used to some certain things. You'll see more of it as we get moving forward. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't want to. What you saw is not what we're going to be. And I, I get it. We're right out of the shoot. And I think sometimes coaches, we can't, we can't show this, we can't show that. And I'm like, why? Tell me, explain to me why. You know, so. Paranoia. How much Which I'm the worst at it, but not that. <laughs> Little balance there. Big thing three is not. Cut down day earlier this week. Roster bringing down to 85 players. Tim Tebow being one of those players released. Cut down day is always a tough day for any coach. No, it's special teams. You know, you're, this whole roster management is really critical as we journey here into the next two weeks. You know, offensive players that, you know, two of the special teams phases are tackling. And you never tackled. That's what I found myself, and I still find it myself. All of us. You know, every every off day we'll have a two to three hour meeting about roster management. And it comes down because we expect to be very good in special teams. And you know, tight end position is one of those. And tailback, if, if you can't contribute on special teams, that's a tough go. Head coach Urban Meyer explaining why Tim Tebow was not the best fit at the tight end position. We'll start right there. It is. Um, it's you gave him a chance, right? He did the best he could, and it didn't work out. No harm, no foul, right? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah, and you know, you guys know me. I, I'm do. a little bit of a cynic. No. Uh, I scoff at things. Really? And, you know, Mostly while, me. Right. I'm known to scoff. Uh, <laughs> and I was never a guy when Tebow was playing. Uh, when he was trying to play quarterback, I didn't necessarily think he was going to be a good quarterback. I, I, I was. If there was pro Tim and anti Tim back in the day, I probably sided with anti Tim. You know, but there was nothing wrong with this. No. And the people who scoff and make fun or whatever, look, he gave it a shot. It's a ninety man roster. There was nothing wrong with seeing if it would work. Uh, as long as when it didn't work, they didn't let it linger in the locker room. They where didn't. players were going, "Hey, this is not going to work. This is a bad idea." So you know, I guess the cynic in me. Tells the other cynics, just stop for a while. It's okay. Move on. He tried. He's by any measure a good kid. They gave him a shot. It didn't work out. I have to give you a big picture, right? I mean, so this is why so many people were polarized on. And, and we're never surprised when we hear stories about, about Tim, right? Um, so no players yesterday, no locker room. I escaped. Generally, you guys know, sometimes I try to go to Daily Mass up at Immaculate Conception. So I did. And the priest there is a longtime Gator and a huge Tim Tebow fan. So Daily Mass, they have five minutes to share a message. His was, I'm mad at the Jaguars for cutting Tim Tebow. So I'm sitting there in my teal shirt, right? The only guy, <laughs> I felt like I was the only person there as he is just, he is mad and he is railing about it. And I'm thinking, really? This is what we're doing? But he was, he's such a passionate football fan on the outside. And he saw me there and he just, again, I don't know that he was directing it at me, but it sure felt that way. That's the sort of passion. And Tim isn't even Catholic. It, it, it's sort of passion that Tim Tebow derives. So we shouldn't be surprised that there were people that loved it and people that hated it. Mm -hmm. But Tebow time had its moment, and now it goes back to him doing the great things that he does off the field. Right. And head coach Urban Meyer, when you look at it, did the right thing because it could have been where he has the relationship with him and he keeps him here. But when you look at it and it's a strictly football decision – I don't understand how people who say they're Jaguars fans can be upset with that yeah. because well, it's impacting the team. Everybody was, you know, there was this fear of, well, he's not going to be able to see it because he likes Tim so much. Mm -hmm. You know what, yeah. Urban also likes winning. Yeah. yeah. So he wasn't going to keep somebody if he didn't think it was going to be a good football move. I thought all along this was a much, you know, I never thought it was particularly a distraction like people talked about. I didn't think there was any harm in it. Uh, it's over. Move on. Okay. Speaking of moving on, we'll move on to big thing two, which is speeding up this offense, showing more in the preseason. It's a balance. You could hear from head coach Urban Meyer that he was a little frustrated with finding that balance. So I think we can expect for the second preseason game, you're going to see more from this offense. We just don't know how much. Well, I think it's been a little bit of a, um, a confusion here about what Urban's talking about. I took this to mean not necessarily that he wanted to see – more uh, wrinkles offensively. He wants to see more urgency yes. offensively. Mm -hmm. um, more and I mean, he wants to see them get to the line of scrimmage quicker. Uh, that pop. We all saw Urban Meyer offenses in college. They moved quickly. They moved efficiently. Um, I think some people took that as what, you know, they're going to show all their trick plays. They're going to show every formation that they have. I didn't see it that way. I think you will definitely see them trying to get the ball snapped quicker. 
trying to just uh, play with more pop, not necessarily more uh, wrinkles. Well, I mean, you said it. I don't know I can add a lot. Intensity, urgency, energy, all of those fit. He wants to see them be more efficient. He wants to see them do what they do and just keep moving along. I, no, he he told you right there in the soundbite that he's the worst among coaches when it comes to being paranoid of showing things, mm -hmm. right? He's not going to show you all that much more. But if you have 10 plays, he wants to see all 10 of them run like that. Play one, play two, play three, and just mm -hmm. go right through it. And um, it just seemed a little herky-jerky <laughs> the other night. It seemed a little, you know, start and stop. It did. And you could expect that from a first preseason game. When I, when he I did expect it. Yeah, when he said that in his press conference, though, I caught myself when he was saying, we're going to work on this in practice. There's going to be urgency in practice. And I thought to myself, this is the most urgent I've ever seen a training camp practice. How can you make it more efficient? But we did see that this mm -hmm. week. It was take it to the next level. And I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah, there was definitely an urgency. Brian, you can speak this as much as I can. On uh, last day we were out there, Tuesday, yeah. mm -hmm. much uh, more fiery. Right. Yes. Uh, well, that was made possible chippy. by Monday's practice. Right. Where it was, it was, it was, I saw guys, as we were standing there getting ready to do some interviews, I saw at least three offensive linemen come off the field looking pained, mm -hmm. right? Because, <laughs> and, and, and we, you know, ostensibly, we picked on them. Everyone was pointing the finger at them. Um, and so, you know, they worked harder, but it wasn't just the offensive linemen. So Monday they had this intense session. Tuesday the intensity came from the players, not the coaches. That was the, that was the transition there. Monday it was the coaches. Mm -hmm. Tuesday it was the players. For sure. An intense week of practice that continues today. The Jaguars back on the practice field today and tomorrow before getting ready to fly to New Orleans for that second preseason game. When we come back on Jaguars Drive Time, a new segment, This or That, coming up right here on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jags Drive Time is presented in part by TIAA Bank. Created to serve, built to perform. By Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. And Baptist Health, changing health care for good. You can step up to luxury now. Hello, I'm Dan Fields. Whatever you're driving, you can step up to luxury now. Plus, get our Fields amenities, which include complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. Make this your year to step up to luxury at Fields Cadillac, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Land Rover, Jaguar, and Lexus. When it comes to the ultimate car buying experience, there's only one name that matters. Fields. And Fields matters because you matter. The Fields Auto Group, proud partners of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Pinpoint, the official signage partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, helps business decision makers like you maximize the impact of their brand. Your company's identification, advertising, and even the words you use make an impression on your clients. With Pinpoint as your coach, you can make sure it's a good impression. Pinpoint provides the creative design and production services for anything you need to enhance your brand, from custom signage to complete marketing solutions. Step up your game with Pinpoint and create the ultimate brand experience for your clients. Visit experiencepinpoint.com. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Jaguars Drive Time is brought to you by Fields Cadillac of Jacksonville and Fields Cadillac of St. Augustine, members of the Fields Auto Group. We're back, Jags Drive Time. It is a Thursday morning as the Jaguars get ready to be back on the practice field after a player day off, getting ready for that second preseason game on Monday night on ESPN. We have a new segment for you. On Thursdays, we're innovative, creative, bringing new ideas. It's called This or That. Two scenarios, what do you pick, this or that? I'll go first. Great. Going with the wide receiver. It's kind of been my thing lately of training camp is how are they going to decide who gets the last spot in the wide receiver room? Philip Dorsett or Jalen Camp take the seventh wide receiver spot because in my eyes, I think the first six are locked in. DJ Chark, Colin Johnson, Marvin Jones, LaVisca Chenault, Laquan Treadwell, got to have a spot for Jamal Agnew. That's six. Seven's a lot. But you got to pick one of these guys, and I think I'm going Philip Dorsett. Do you take the speedy for agent acquisition, or do you take the draft pick? In my mind, Brian, I think Philip Dorsett has shown more. Yeah, camp. well, I mean, look, 
he's been, he hasn't been practicing consistently until this week. Mm-hmm. Didn't play in the preseason game. Don't know if he will. Um, but and every time you think I haven't seen much from him, you hear from a coach. You know, you hear a coach saying, "No, no, I like him, like his speed, like what he brings. He's a veteran guy." Um, just for the, the the sake of this other side, I interviewed Jalen Camp for a feature that's going to be up on the website in the next day or two. Um, I liked him a lot. He, you know, confident, smart kid. Played at Georgia Tech. Came from a uh, triple option offense, which, again, they don't get many opportunities to catch the ball when all you're doing is running. But played in the spread his senior year and did a really nice job. He's absolutely going to be on the practice squad. I think because you've got a couple of big bodies up there, it's harder to find the the, the guy like Dorsett with real speed mm-hmm. um, as opposed to a Jalen Camp. But Jalen Camp's a guy who's worthy of a practice squad and might find his way to the active roster before the season's done. Yeah, I, I would be stunned – if uh, Philip Dorsett's not on the roster, I probably would have, if I was phrasing this question, I probably would have had a Colin Johnson or Jalen Camp. I think Dorsett would be ahead of uh, Treadwell and Johnson from what I've seen and what, and what he's going to bring it, only because of this, Ashley. He's fast. Really mm-hmm. fast. And this team, these coaches love speed. They brought him here for a reason. Um, so I definitely think Dorsett makes the team over Camp. But I agree with Brian. I think the thing you have to remember about – this whole 53-man roster, we get so caught up in it, and I do too. We're going to decide the 53, 16 practice squad guys. M- most of these guys we're talking about are also going to be around. It's a 69-man roster mm-hmm. in reality this yeah. year. Yeah, and I catch myself. I was thinking about Colin Johnson, but then you also think he has something that the others don't have, which is that big body. He stands out. So you catch yourself, okay, c- can you really get rid of that? Absolutely. I don't know. I get stressed about it. I'm not going to lie. Well, you may, keep, you may keep fewer tight ends. You may keep mm-hmm. fewer running backs. You may keep fewer defensive backs. You, you, you find a spot for Agnew if he, he, as a return man, and they're certainly going to do that. The question mark becomes, do you find for an extra receiver or mm-hmm. not? We'll see. We shall see. All right, John, you are up. I'm up, and uh, my obsession with Walker Little it's continues. Um, Walker <laughs> Little, okay, we'll phrase it this or that. Walker Little will work with the first team or the second team on Saturday. Ooh, uh. um, and I'm couching this a little bit. The first team's coming at some point. Yeah. Sure but is. I don't think it's coming this week for him because what Urban Meyer said about uh, Walker Little on Monday when he spoke, the struggling with the hands, uh, the grades and the reaction from people who really watched him play on Monday was not what sort of the fans saw. And and, he, and even what I saw, I, I came out of that game thinking they got to put Walker Little in the starting lineup. Talking to Tony Baselli on this set on Monday, he said, hey, he's going to be really good, but his hands right now, his hand placement is really an issue and may not be ready to start right now. So it's coming. I don't think it's coming this week, his rest for the first team. But we'll see. I've been wrong before, Brian. Um, I... I don't know. I, I'll say second team only because the coach and Tony both were were on that side. But I, I, I called the game, so I couldn't follow what the left tackle was doing. But I do recall when I was looking down, he had his guy way out of the way. I think there's a really high bar that they want him to clear mm-hmm. before they put him in, before they're completely comfortable with him. So I think they're going to point out all of the things that they really don't like mm-hmm. about Walker Little's game. And, and so I think they're going to make him work even harder to get his time with the ones. And but they're really in a mode of making these rookies. I mean, yeah, make them earn Trevor's it. Nor- yeah. Trevor Lawrence isn't starting yet. So, I mean, it, you know, yeah. So Walker yeah. Little sure yeah. isn't. Yeah, I just, I, I, I get that sense that, that, that they are really going to be. But I, I think when I look at him, I think he's one of your best five offensive linemen for sure. Mm-hmm. I will say when we heard Coach Meyer say that in his press conference and he had a critique on Walker Little, I was like, how dare you? I'm so not used to hearing these things, something right. negative. Yeah. Like, Why is he saying this? Yeah, and maybe on the bus. And Canton struggled with hands. <laughs> As a rookie, <laughs> right. right? Yeah. All right, Brian, what do you got? Um, C.J. Beathard or Gardner Minshew gets the number two snaps. Ooh. And, I, you know, I mean, I think it's going to be Minshew because of what we've seen on the practice field. But, I, look, if you're the coach made a big deal when we first saw Winners and Losers Day that you're charting and success. The chart is objective. Well, objectively, there's no competition. C.J. Beathard was much better much better than Gardner Minshew last week. So I think, you know, playing with your question, I think you should get snaps with the number two group uh, against New Orleans on Monday night. What say you? I think he probably will. Um, I think he probably will. 
Yeah, I, I, and I was trying to think something intelligent to say. I didn't have anything, but, but he, he, he looked so much better the other night. Uh, it was unusual. Gardner usually does not look the part as well as maybe a Trevor Lawrence is going to, but he usually plays better than that. So mm-hmm. I do wonder if they will give him one more shot with that second team. I'd be surprised if he if he is as unproductive again as he was the other night. Uh, but I think you get. I think it's only fair to CJ to give him one. You know, I'd give him at least one series with the ones, maybe to start the second half. I. Uh, I'm not even talking I'm about sure thir- that'll come. I'm not even talking about 13 of 16. I'm just talking about the arm talent, Ashley. To oh see yeah, it was what obvious. He can do with his arm, um, and look, we've known Gardner Minshew does not have a big arm. Can't make all the throws. Um, Beathard looks like he can. Mm-hmm. But I'm hesitant because I do think CJ Beathard should get the number two. But then you hear Coach Meyer, who is so complimentary of Gardner Minshew. I think most likely they're going to give him another shot, like John said. I don't know if we agree with it, but it's just the way it is. Yeah. We're not the coaches. You're right. <laughs> And that is This or That presented by Price.com. When we come up on Jaguars Drive Time, he will, he won't, he might, going into the second preseason game. Jags Drive Time is presented in part by DreamFinders Homes, homes that fit your lifestyle. Next Grill, everyone's invited. And at Deco, visit adecousa.com. You can step up to luxury now. Hello, I'm Dan Fields. Whatever you're driving, you can step up to luxury now. Plus, get our Fields amenities, which include complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. Make this your year to step up to luxury at Fields Cadillac, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Land Rover, Jaguar, and Lexus. When it comes to the ultimate car buying experience, there's only one name that matters. Fields. And Fields matters because you matter. The Fields Auto Group, proud partners of your Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi folks, Frank Frangie here to tell you where to find the most authentic Southern Pit Barbecue in all of Jacksonville. That's right, Bono's. For 72 years, Bono's has been smoking real pit barbecue right here on the First Coast. Smoked for hours, served in minutes, and always cut to order. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field. Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you want great barbecue, head to Bono's today. If you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. Move day is on the 20, the 10. Yes, another successful move to a new home. I tell you, folks, I've never seen a team more prepared than the Move Day crew. With a dominating lead in training, trust, and moving efficiency, it's no wonder why Move Day is the official moving company of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Track your goods online and get updated play-by-plays throughout your move process. While the Jags are moving the chains on game day, they're here to help you on moving day. Call 844-MY-MOVE-DAY or visit movedaymovers.com. We're back, Jaguars Drive Time Thursday, brought to you by the Fields Auto Group. It is time for He Will, He Won't, He Might, preseason edition. Second preseason game this Monday on ESPN. Brian Sexton, you're going cornerbacks, I I'm believe. going with Sidney Jones. Um, you know, we saw him last year emerge into the lineup uh, in Houston and made play after, I think he had four pass breakups in that one game last year in Houston in early October. So he will have people talking about him. In 2017, John, you might recall, he was thought to be a first-round pick coming out of Washington. Then he tore his Achilles, and the Eagles still took him because of his potential in the second round. Um, I think you'll have people looking at him and talking, hey, there's the Sidney Jones. It's taken him a while. Now, he won't beat out C.J. Henderson because as good as I think this kid is, he, he C.J. Henderson has special skills, and we saw a little bit of that last week. Uh, against Cleveland Um, but he might knowing how this coaching staff wants people to earn the job Mm -hmm. and with the COVID situation and them working to get CJ back into the program they might make him earn it and beat uh, Sidney Jones out and I think the Jaguars defense will be just fine with Sidney Jones for a time Henderson's a better player but Jones is a really good player in his own right yeah when I see Sidney Jones and I don't I have not studied him before he was injured uh, they say the Achilles is, is, is the injury, unlike an ACL, that you never quite get back from Achilles to where you might have been. Right. Uh, if he was better before the Achilles than he is now, uh, if he's a step slower because of that, again, I don't know, uh, boy, was he good because he makes plays in the ball. He has instincts. He is impressive. I don't know 
I'm sure he's not as fast as he was before. Right. I'm sure the quickness is a little bit effective. The fact that he can still do it with all the problems he's had with that is impressive. Boy, what a player he could have been, mm-hmm. and credit to him for coming back from that because that is a devastating injury for that position. Mike Ryan, who is a longtime athletic trainer here who now works for NBC as their guy, uh, he once explained it to me. The reason why the Achilles is so damaging is because of where it is, it gets the lowest amount of blood flow of any tendon in your body. And so the recovery is never quite as good as mm-hmm. it might be for an ACL or a shoulder tendon or something like that. But he uh, he made a play on the ball in the end zone. No, the he's other impressive. Night. He's, yeah. He's, he's a nice player. He, he might be this team's best sort of street free agent signing in recent memory. Nice. Way to add it on. Very yeah. consistent guy. Very reliable guy, I will say. Very. Mm-hmm. All right, John. That mm-hmm. was a he will, he won't, he might, he might. Yeah. Might to the second it, it, Mighty Mike. It's impressive. That's <laughs> a, uh, I went with Chris Manhurts, um, and I feel like we've talked about him a little bit on this show, so maybe I'm repeating, but uh, he will be really important to this offense this year, and uh, he w- and he won't necessarily be that guy that Jaguars fans want at tight end. Everybody wants Travis Kelsey. Everybody wants George Kittle. I don't know that he's going to be the devastating receiving target. That's not what he was brought in for. Really, really, really good blocker. But he might be a lot better than they thought. And I'm thinking he might catch six or seven touchdowns. Um, he has more athleticism and more ability to get the ball than I expected. When I was reading about him and, and when I watched him in Carolina a little bit, I pictured sort of a big hulking blocker type mm-hmm. guy. He's got that in him, but this is not a guy who's lumbering around back there. So he may have just scratched the surface on what he can really do. So he played um, basketball at Canisius College in Buffalo, New York, and he's a power forward, right? So he knows how to use his body, Mm -hmm. and you talk about six or seven touchdowns. If he can learn how to do that in a football sense Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, post a guy up or, you know, block him out with his body, yeah, he might be able to do that. Urban Meyer told... Bucky Brooks and myself last Friday in our broadcast production meeting, he just moves people. And he's one of those guys. You think about guys they might rest at all in the preseason. He's one of those guys. They think of him as being irreplaceable because you don't find big bodies like that. Uh, he was very, very impressive at the podium. Talked about, you know, Mercedes Lewis being someone yep. he had studied and talked to. Um, he looks the part. What he does, he does exceptionally well. And because of his athletic background, John, I think he can get a lot better. He's made a couple of catches, Ashlyn, in practice that when you think of the lumbering, blocking tight mm-hmm. end, and, I, and we've all covered and seen that guy, he's made a couple of catches that those guys don't make. Right. So it's there. At least once or twice this year, he's going to make catches where people say, why isn't he getting the ball? You know, it, it, he has that sort of potential. Uh, and the one he caught the other day was what really struck me. He caught one in the corner of the end zone where Trevor put it right mm-hmm. where only he could catch it. It was an athletic catch. It was an athletic yeah. catch. Toward of his body. Yeah. But it didn't look hard for him. No. You follow me? Yeah. Like sometimes if I'm not mistaken, players make athletic catches and you think, wow, he made that catch, I'll never do it again. Right. This looked like something he can do a lot and be a thing for this team. Well, you don't think of a guy that big being a toe tapper, but if I recall, if it's the same catch, he had to work to make sure both feet were in. Right. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah. He did a nice job. That was a all I could think of when I saw that was that's what Urban likes about him. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a little unfair when he was brought in for free agency during his press conference. And whenever we talked about him, we're like, oh, well, he's only a blocking tight end. Yeah. It was almost like the narrative was set for him when he walked in this building, and we never thought anything differently until he proved us wrong. He'll be a key player because if he helps them establish the run and set up play action, mm-hmm. that is a quarterback, a rookie quarterback's best friend, the running oh, yeah. game. I mean, it will make the quarterback so much better which helps explain why he's such a cornerstone of what they want to do on offense. All right, last one. He will, he won't, he might. Presented by Move Day. I'm going Damian Wilson, brought in free agency from the Kansas City Chiefs. He will be your new starting middle linebacker. We'll have to be assertive. There's no might about that. No. All right. What, what did I say, might? No. <laughs> he, will. he will. I'm making a statement. Darn two. <laughs> Darn two, and he'll be the starting middle linebacker. And he won't be the only guy who can contribute. I think uh, suddenly, Quincy Williams, Shaquille Quarterman, you're su- all of a sudden hearing a ton about them. This coaching staff seems to love the depth that's at this position, so I don't think the pressure's on him that he's the only guy that can contribute at this position. And he might be the reason that Miles Jack takes even a bigger step forward. The past couple of years, Miles Jack has had so much pressure on him to get guys in line and worry about everyone else. 
this is a pairing that you feel really good about that both guys can do their job very solidly. Can I add a he might? Sure. He might might. He might 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 <laughs> become a fan favorite fast because this guy hits. Yeah. He is the thumper middle linebacker that, you know, I'm not sure they've had since maybe pause. You know, I, I, I may be forgetting that. Yeah. I, I don't compare him to pause. Pause is really good. But um, he, the word on this guy, and it was one of the first practices, he hit Travis Etienne, where I'm, I'm not sure they really wanted him to hit quite yeah. like that. <laughs> but he hits, and he is a thumper. His hitting ability is the reason that Joe Schobert is, uh, is, is one of the reasons uh, Schobert's not here. This guy really plays the run well. Uh, he'll be the middle linebacker in base. He'll probably come out the field in nickel. But he's a guy that fans are going to like. You're starting to hear more about Shaq Quarterman from Oakleaf on the west side yep. of Jacksonville. Um, Quincy Williams still interests me. You talk about big hitters. His rookie season, remember, he's Murray State. He's a swimmer. None of us know anything about him. But the one thing I can recall from, from 2019 was when he hit you, I mean, he came, he arrived with some force. He can really run as well. So I'm interested to see if he can make progress mm -hmm. and earn a spot or even on the practice squad because when you're in a 3-4, as I've said for months, you got to have a lot of linebackers at your disposal. So it's, it'd be interesting to me with this new staff to see if he can sort of rehabilitate because uh, the old staff was tired of him. Mm -hmm. See if he can rehabilitate his, uh, his on-the-field persona yeah kind of a fresh chance for yep. all of them all right that is he will he won't he might presented by move day move day is jacksville's most dependable and caring local moving company move day is proud to be the official moving company of the jacksonville jaguars to get a free instant quote call 844 my move day or visit movedaymovers.com we'll be back on jack's drive time you can step up to luxury now Hello, I'm Dan Fields. Whatever you're driving, you can step up to luxury now. Plus, get our Fields amenities, which include complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. Make this your year to step up to luxury at Fields Cadillac, Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Land Rover, Jaguar, and Lexus. When it comes to the ultimate car buying experience, there's only one name that matters, Fields. And Fields matters because you matter. The Fields Auto Group, proud partners of your Jacksonville Jaguars. At ViStar, we believe in better. And what's better than saving up to $5,000 in closing costs when you buy or refinance a home? With a ViStar No Closing Costs Mortgage, you'll get a great rate, no hidden fees, and like the name says, no closing costs up to $5,000. If you believe saving money is better, join ViStar. Equal housing opportunity insured by NCUA. All loans subject to credit approval. Offer not available on VA and FHA mortgages. For more information, visit ViStarCU.org. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30 plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single family homes or maintenance free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit dreamfindershomes.com. Subpar. <laughs> it's your chance to be a part of the new era of Jaguars football. Become a season ticket member for exclusive insider access and experiences. Secure your seats for the best prices at jaguars.com slash tickets. We're back, Jags Drive Time. Brian's section just made a paper airplane, and it didn't go so well. That's what we do on commercial breaks here. here's the thing. You're supposed to protect your broadcast partner. No one saw it. You could have just <laughs> let it go. John's was worse. There's yeah, your protection. Good. All right, thank you. <laughs> Coming up, three press conferences for you on about an hour on Jaguars.com and social media. Daryl Bevel, Jamal Agnew, Jared Wilson coming up. Jaguars back on the practice field, and you can stay with us on Jaguars.com all weekend long for your preseason game coverage. We're back. Next Tuesday. Wednesday. Wednesday. Right. Wednesday. I'll get it correct at some point. That's why I'm here, Slim. <laughs> to protect you. Yes. You got it. Stay with us right here on Jaguars.com. We will see you next Wednesday. <laughs>